Serbia acts as a bridgehead for spreading Russian hybrid influences and regional instability in both the Western Balkans and the entire Balkan Peninsula in general. Kosovo entered the year 2023 without an official representation in the north. This is the first time in such a long time that this part of the partially recognized republic found itself in a conditional grey zone. Hello and welcome to Ukraine in Flames, a special project by Ukraine Media Center and NGO Euro-Atlantic Course. And I'm your host, Miroslava Yaremkin. It has been 28 years since the Dayton Accords were signed, and the Western Balkans are inching closer than ever to a return to the political violence, ethnic cleansing, and mass migration that plagued the region following the dissolution of the Yugoslav Federation. Clashes in Kosovo this summer left dozens of NATO troops injured, while Serbia was rocked by the largest mass protest movement since the toppling of Slobodan Milosevic in 2000. In Bosnia and Herzegovina, Serb leader Milorad Dodik has been actively threatening secession and criticizing the existing political structure as a failed experiment. Net migration out of the Western Balkans into the EU, which has already wreaked havoc on Balkans' fragile economic situation for decades, is also poised to accelerate dramatically. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the political landscape of the Balkans and discuss external hybrid influences with a focus on Russia's extensive impact across the entire region. If you want to learn more about the subject, please continue watching this video and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss our videos in the future. For many years, Moscow has been trying to slow down and freeze the process of European expansion in the Western Balkans. Using the Republic of Srpska, which is against joining the EU and NATO, and Serbia, which is negotiation accession, but is doing so only for appearances and to meet its own economic and financial needs. Considering that Milorad Dodik is always ready to meet with Russian leadership, particularly with Sergei Lavrov and Vladimir Putin, it is more advantageous for the Kremlin to focus on destabilizing the situation in Bosnia and Herzegovina through the Republic of Srpska. Diving deeper into Russian hybrid influence in the Balkans, please welcome expert of the Analytical Center for Balkan Studies, Katarina Shimkevich. As for the Balkan region, I will focus on the Western Balkans, because in 2023 its conflictogenic potential increased and continues to increase in 2024. This region can be characterized by several directions of crisis and conflict-generating phenomena. First of all, those are internal problems, which are most observed in Serbia, Bosnia, Kosovo and Montenegro. And there are external hybrid influences, which Russia extends to the entire region. They tend to spread to NATO countries. And unfortunately, the European Union and the United States of America showed themselves in 2023 and showed themselves at the beginning of 2024 as countries that are unable to respond adequately to Russia's growing threats. Serbia acts as a bridgehead for spreading Russian hybrid influences and regional instability in both the Western Balkans and the entire Balkan Peninsula in general. This is a country that continues to actively arm itself. This is a country that pretends to be on the way to a certain normalization of relations with Kosovo. In 2023, Serbia continued to actively interfere in the internal affairs of neighboring Montenegro by spreading pro-Serbian sentiments and using the Serbian Orthodox Church. In Montenegro, this led to the coming to power of both pro-European and pro-Serbian and pro-Russian forces, which are trying to destabilize Montenegro and divert it from the path of European integration. The newly formed government in Montenegro demonstrates its pro-Europeanism, but at the same time a pro-Russian candidate has been elected as the head of the parliament. Through the Serbian Orthodox Church, Serbia is trying to attract Montenegro to the so-called Serbian world. Besides, Serbia is trying to transfer similar trends with involvement in the Serbian world to rather unstable Bosnia and Herzegovina. 
In 2024, Montenegro will continue to demonstrate such political instability and complete polarization of society into pro-European and pro-Serbian sentiments. And this can be used by Russia, which will try to use Montenegro in order to promote anti-European and anti-American narratives there and show the possibility of not joining the European Union. Let's return to Serbia. Serbia showed some political stability until the end of 2023. But in December, after holding the parliamentary elections, Serbia showed that the polarization that had existed in society for several years came out and began to shake Serbia to the point of a conflict between society and the current government, rather than to a point of civil war, since the government took a direct path to authoritarianism. The mass protests that broke out in Serbia at the end of December 2023 attracted the attention of Ukraine as well. The Ukrainian mass media wrote quite a lot about it and with fairly correct accents. These protests were compared with the Ukrainian European Maidan of 2013, early 2014. Russian propaganda took advantage of this and through its media resources, through its channels, began to disseminate their narratives about the transfer from Ukraine to the Balkans of the so-called Maidan technologies, which are being successfully implemented in Serbia by the so-called collective West. Currently, this has led to such a stratification in society. In the turbulent year of 2023, the strained relations between Kosovo and Serbia reached a critical point, marking one of the most challenging periods since the 1999 war. The prolonged crisis in northern Kosovo rooted in 2021 began with the change of power in Pristina and an attempt to alter the existing status quo in relations with the northern neighbor. For more details on the situation with the last year's elections in Kosovo, please welcome sociologist and expert of the Analytical Center for Balkan Studies, Andriy Kristal. Everything we saw last year was a continuation of the crisis that began in the northern Kosovo in 2021. It coincided with and was partly caused by the change of power in Kosovo and subsequent political processes in the region. Kosovo entered the year 2023 without an official representation in the north. This is the first time in such a long time that this part of the partially recognized republic found itself in a conditional grey zone. Let me remind you that two years ago, residents of municipalities with a predominantly Serbian population expressed a strong protest against the decisions of the Kosovo government and the representatives of the Serbs in the local authorities left these local authorities, the police and the courts. As a result, Kosovo found itself in a grey zone in 2023, waiting for new elections, where it was necessary to fill the positions of the Serbs who boycotted participation in the official bodies of Kosovo from 2022. In March 2023, there was a small hope that the situation might not unfold, as it did to these dramatic scenarios. The parties met in Ohrid, Macedonia, discussed their previous normalization agreements and established a new agreement, better known as the Ohrid Agreement, on the normalization of relations between Kosovo and Serbia. The deal looked very good, as always, the Western partners actively supported everything, affirmed their participation and involvement in the preparation of such an important document. However, it was adopted only in words and, as a result, it has not been implemented yet. And instead of further reproachment and improvement of relations, instead of solving a number of problems, very often of a bureaucratic administrative nature that exists between the regions, we moved to escalation. Because in April, local elections were held in Kosovo, which were opposed in Serbia, and Western partners urged Kosovo to be more careful about these elections. The minimal voter turnout was 3% of the population of these regions, which led to a rather paradoxical situation where in these regions, with a majority of the Serbian population, Ethnic Albanians were elected to local authorities and other bodies. 
This led to a number of protests. Special forces were involved and the key four forces, that is, NATO forces in Kosovo, and new skirmishes ensued. Nevertheless, the elected mayors took the oath and assumed their positions. Serbia protested and can continue to observe how all these hybrid influences that Katerina mentioned accumulated. Because at the same time we saw protests simultaneously in Kosovo and those in Serbia, caused and supported by the Vucic government. And interestingly, the reaction of the West to the result of these local elections was quite unexpected, which also resonates with what Katerina mentioned earlier, because the West pushed Prime Minister of Kosovo, Albun Kurti, to dialogue with Belgrade, urging them to cancel the elections that had taken place. And the most dramatic moment last year was the September incident in the city of Zvecheni, which is also in the north of Kosovo. What happened then? About 30 armed Kosovo Serbs and Serbian militants opened fire in one of the villages, as a result of which one policeman was killed. Then there were clashes with the Kosovo police. Three armed police were killed. Some were arrested. And this security incident is precisely the key turning point for 2023 in Kosovo. Because blood was spilt for the first time. And this means that Western deterrent mechanisms no longer work in the Baltics. As for the forecast, it is difficult to predict exactly what will happen next year. Most likely, the confrontation between Kosovo and Serbia will continue, and the tense conflict in the region will be further complicated. There are more optimistic and less optimistic scenarios, but the degree of tension is increasing, as it is everywhere in the world. You've been watching a special project by Ukraine Media Center, an NGO Euro-Atlantic course dedicated to the Russian-Ukrainian war, Ukraine in Flames. In the description under this video, you can find information on how you can help Ukraine fight Russian aggression. If you find our work useful, please like and share this video. Slava Ukraini!